Okay, what camera should I buy? So this is probably one of the most popular questions that any filmmaking channel on YouTube gets asked. I know I get it a lot. Maybe I should get this one. You got some money in your pocket now. Maybe you just had a birthday and you came into, I don't know, 500, maybe a couple grand. Maybe you've been saving your money up. You want to get a camera, but you don't want to get the wrong one. Definitely this one. So let's talk about cameras. First, we got some groundwork to cover. Why do you need the camera? What do you plan to shoot with the camera? What's your budget? These are all really important questions. Well, that's a great observation, Darius. No sh Hold your horses. If you plan to make films, but you also want to do videography work, that makes a difference. If you also want to make films, but you also would like the option of taking photos like a photographer, that would make a difference. A documentary filmmaker is gonna require very different things from their camera than a fiction filmmaker would. Right, 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 right. Thinking about your budget means thinking about more than just the price of the camera. Do you have lights? Do you have a tripod? Do you have microphones? Do you have lenses? Do you have any other goodies? It takes more than just a good camera to make a good film. So if you don't have any of these other goodies, then you're probably gonna to wanna to skimp on the price of the camera and go with something a little more lower end so that way you can afford to buy these other goodies. I would just shoot videos on my iPhone. I would recommend to get a T3i or even a T2i for like two or three hundred dollars. These are great starter cameras because they're so dirt cheap and you can still get great image quality out of them. People have shot feature films on these cameras, guys. These cameras have just enough manual functionality on them for you to learn everything that you need to learn to start understanding cameras and filmmaking. And then after a year or two of using the camera, once I've learned everything on it and I've outgrown it and I'm ready to upgrade my camera, then I would start looking at whatever the latest, greatest high-end camera was on the market at the time. Who knows, maybe it's like a 5D Mark VII. So I've had a Canon 60D for quite a while. I've been shooting with it since 2010. And if I were to upgrade, I would probably get the Sony a7S because most of the stuff that I do, very controlled shots, very planned out, and I feel that that's where that camera shines. So the pros, it can shoot a 4K image, but it's got to downsize it to 2K. I'd love it if it shot 4K straight out the barrel, but a 2K image that was downsized from 4K is still gonna look tons better than just an ordinary 2K image. This thing is a low light monster. It could practically see in the dark. It's amazing how sensitive this camera is to light. And plus, I like that you can shoot slow motion 60 frames per second at full 1080. I couldn't get that out of any of the Canons that I have had or used. I also like that full frame sensor. I'm sorry, I'm a sucker for the shallow depth of field, and I love it for the type of stuff that I shoot. I think you could also go up to 120 frames a second at 720. That's pretty nice. You can also switch modes between full frame and APS-C. That's pretty ballin'. It's like $2,500 for the body alone, I think, but considering all that you're getting, that is an amazing price point. So the cons. Well, the camera's an E-mount, so if you've got Sony glass or Nikon glass, you're gonna have to get a Metabones adapter. The Sony glass that's made for these cameras, it's impossible to rack focus with them. So you're not gonna be buying any Sony glass, unfortunately, until they come out with some lenses that address that issue. Also, the camera's got some really bad rolling shutter issues, which is nothing new. I mean, that's something that if you've been using DSLRs, you've learned to work around anyway. That just means I'm not gonna be filming any car chase scenes anytime soon. If I couldn't afford to get an A7S, then I would definitely get the GH4. It can shoot 4K internally, freaking awesome. It's the cheapest way to get into 4K on the market right now. The body's only $1,500. The bit rate isn't crazy high, so I'm not gonna have to worry about buying a hundred million hard drives to store all the damn files. Aliasing and Moria are pretty much a thing of the past and it also has a really nice articulating screen. Since having my Canon 60D I cannot stress to you enough how nice it is to have an articulating screen. Yes when you're on professional shoots you get all these external monitors and you got video village yada 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 but when you're doing guerrilla style filmmaking or extremely low budget filmmaking when you're just running gunning getting stuff on the cheap an articulating screen is your best friend. You can throw it in a refrigerator, you can squeeze into tight places, and you can still rotate that puppy around so that you can see exactly what you need to see. It's also really nice for vlogging situations just like this, where you can see yourself and make adjustments. Cons. Well, you're going to have to get an adapter if you have Canon glass, like I do. And also, it doesn't perform very well in low light situations, but it has a micro four third sensor. Smaller sensors tend not to perform as well in low light. And plus, it has a much broader depth of field because it's a smaller sensor. So you gotta fight to get that nice, crisp, shallow depth of field that I like to use a lot. 
Now we go for the Canon C100. It's designed to accommodate more of the run and gun style shooting in the videography. It's the cheapest camera in Canon's cinema line and I think the body by itself is going for like $4,500, which in my opinion, it's a little overpriced considering you can only shoot 4K internally and you can't shoot any type of slow motion, not even 60 frames a second. I mean, even cell phones can do that for crying out loud. Even GoPro can do that. It's got a built-in microphone, XLR inputs, audio controls, everything that you'd need to get great audio in a pinch, which is essential for documentary filmmaking and videography for that matter. And it's also got built-in internal ND filters. If you're shooting wedding photography or videography or documentary shooting, that's pretty much much a must. You're not going to have time to be screwing on ND filters at the end of your lenses. The batteries can last for five hours on a single charge. Pretty handy. It's also got dual SD card slots, so if you fill up one SD card, you got a whole another one waiting in the wings. It's got a lot of awesome video assist features, including a really good autofocus feature that works pretty nice, because let's face it, if you're running into a burning building doing a firefighter dock, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to be racking focus. If I couldn't afford to get the C100, then I would go for the GH4. In my opinion, the Micro Four Thirds sensor really shines in shooting situations like this, because if you're trying to capture a really important moment, the last thing you want to be doing is fighting that shallow ass depth of field. You want something that has more of a broad depth of field so you're not messing around with your focus all the time. The camera is also a lot smaller so it accommodates for more discreet shooting in those situations where you don't exactly want people to know that you're like, you know, recording video or something. So there's that. And also the camera is a lot less intimidating for people who are not comfortable being in front of a camera, which you would usually find in a documentary type situation. I probably wouldn't get the Blackmagic production 4K camera. It shoots 4K raw. It spits out a great codec, which is ProRes. Great for post manipulation. It can handle a lot more punishment. It's got the nice global shutter. Yep, great, so you don't have to worry about the jello effect. 12 stops dynamic range. Awesome. But out of the box, it's damn near useless. It might as well be a paperweight. It's like $3,000 just for the brain alone. The batteries only last for about 25 minutes worth of shooting. What can you get done in 25 minutes? So now you gotta invest in Anton Bauer batteries or other battery power sources for the camera. Of course, it takes solid state drives. That's an additional cost. Solid state drives are a little I mean, they're not as inexpensive as SD cards or CF cards. So if you get this camera, you better have some solid state money in your pocket too. Doesn't come with any of the solid state drives from what I recall, so you gotta buy those. Plus you gotta buy a dock to get all the media off the drives. That's another cost. You also definitely gotta get a handheld rig for that camera because the form factor of the camera is not very handheld friendly. I mean, you're, you're practically holding a block. You only really have two usable ISO settings out of three, and it's horrible in low light not looking so hot. The camera has blooming issues when you record sources of light or overexposed areas. It looks like little black sun. It's pretty noticeable. So basically if you're recording concerts or stand-up comedy shows, you don't want to bring this camera along. We've actually used these cameras a few times recently and noticed that there was artifacting in the footage. So basically if you reformat the card in the camera, then you get artifacting in your footage, which is totally not cool and I don't know if this is something that they, they're gonna fix soon or if this is something they may have already addressed but it was pretty recent. It's really tough to compete with the a7s and the gh4 both cameras shoot 4k both are at a cheaper price point and both work straight out of the box. Trying to find a perfect camera is like trying to find a unicorn. It doesn't exist. Every camera is going to have its strengths and its weaknesses, and it's up to you to pick the camera that works best for you. Don't get suckered into the new camera hype. There's always going to be some latest, greatest camera out there that everybody makes you feel like you need to buy. Next year, there'll be four more new cameras that everybody's buzzing about. But don't get suckered into buying something that is more than you need. What good is it to overspend on a camera that provides you with all these functionalities that you might never use, but then you don't have enough money to get all these other things that'll make an even bigger difference in your production value, like lenses, sound, mics, lights. I've been shooting with this Canon 60D for like four years. I've shot many short films with it. I've shot a feature length film that holds up great on the big screen. I've shot damn near every YouTube video you've seen me in with this camera. And it's still holding up. It's not the perfect camera, but I know how to get what I need out of it, and that's what matters. At the end of the day, it's not about what you have, but how you use what you have. If I were to hand, say, Steven Spielberg a T2i, he's probably gonna spit out a masterpiece. If I were to hand a 12-year-old a Red Epic, he's probably gonna spit out a piece of shit. 
What really makes the difference in all of this is your knowledge, experience, talent, craftsmanship, and storytelling ability. The camera is just one tool in the filmmaker's toolbox. I hope that helps a couple of people make, you know, their decisions a little bit easier. Maybe it was a big giant waste of time. I don't know. I guess I'll find out in the comments. That's all I got for you. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, please like or subscribe. You can also follow me on the social medias at uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and also you can check out my uh, second blog channel, Darius Britt. I chronicle my journey with uh, my first feature-length film, Unsound. And outside of that, uh, that's all I got for you. Deebert out.